Hi, I'm Scott Willison, owner of the Confluence Fly Shop in Bellingham, Washington. And today I am going to share with you a, a fly that I've wanted to do a video on for a long time. And this is by no means an original fly. This one's been around for years. Uh, it uh, was the brainchild of uh, Alan Peterson. Um, it is an indispensable Northwest pattern. This is one I reach for in my lake box when I'm having a hard time catching fish or not quite sure what to tie on and it's as good a searching pattern as any and uh, I'm going to tie the version I've always tied and done pretty well with. So, uh, In my vise I have a Daiichi 1710 in a size 12. I mostly tie this in 10s and 12s. Um, and then I've already got it on the hook, but I have a medium uh, ruby red killer caddis glass bead on there, um, which I think is a, a huge part of what makes this fly effective. Um, so we're going to go ahead and start with some 70 denier olive ultra thread. We'll start that up right behind the glass bead. and take it back to just before the bend of the hook. And then we are going to start uh, weaving in the magic ingredient to this fly. Um, this uh, is a yellow dyed uh, ringneck pheasant rump patch. Uh, some people use olive on this. Uh, I, I swear by the yellow ones. It's got kind of a funky olive-ish color overall, but uh, get yourself a yellow dyed uh, ringneck pheasant rump uh, to tie this fly. It is good stuff. Um, I've got a feather selected uh, just kind of off the back of the rump. Uh, you can see it's got lots of fluffy stuff here. I'm going to use a bit of this fluff for the tail and I'll just kind of strip off a, a decent amount, roll that between my thumb and forefinger to get it uh, together and then we'll go just go ahead and tie it in. I may add a little bit more to this here too if it's uh, not to my liking. Go ahead and trim our butt ends off and then I think we're pretty good on the tail. I'm gonna go ahead and just pinch this down to length. Um, these, these soft uh, under plumage from the ringneck pheasant it's just like marabou you don't really want to cut it with scissors but uh, if you just take your fingernails and kind of pinch it tightly. There we go. I got myself a, a nice fluffy little tail. And then for the body of the fly, um, I am going to use peacock and black uh, variegated chenille. Um, you see this one tied a lot with regular olive um, and uh, various other chenilles. I'm a really big fan of the, the variegated chenille. And so I tend to tie it with that. Uh, we're going to just expose a little bit of a thread core there on the, the chenille. So we got a nice bulk free tie in point. Do a couple of loose wraps to trap that. And then make sure we got that really secured in place. All right. And then we are going to go ahead and wrap the chenille all the way up to the glass bead. And then Trim that off close and we're good to go. Now I've got another uh, yellow dyed ringneck pheasant rump feather. 
a little bit shorter. I want this hackle uh, to go back, not quite all the way to the back of the tail, maybe about halfway to the, the tail. Um, and to get it ready, I'm going to just strip away some of this fluffy stuff I don't need. You always kind of want to be careful in doing that too, because the stem often likes to break. Um, so I am going to grab myself some hackle pliers just in case I need them. If we're lucky, I won't. And then we'll train back some of those fibers so we get a nice nice little point on the feather to work with. I'm going to go ahead and just pre-trim that. And we'll tie it in just by that little point. Alright, I think I think we're going hackle pliers today. This one is awfully short. So we'll grab that stem and gonna kind of get those fibers sweeping back. want to get two to three turns of this. And we're going to go with two. I think it's important on this one and the carry special. Don't don't over hackle it. You lose a lot of your your movement on the fly. Sometimes less is more. So we'll get that stem bound down. Go ahead and fold it back, take a couple wraps over it, and then we can trim off what we don't need. We'll go ahead and take a few more wraps so we're good there, and then I'm going to use my little super glue trick to finish this fly off because there's really not much to get head cement in there without getting it all in the hackle and everything. So if you just lightly brush that thread with, with super glue and then wrap it on up. You are good to go. And then we'll go ahead and just get a three or four turn whip finish in there. And we can trim that off. There you have it, the Olive Willie. Uh, you will see a lot of versions that have a tuft of uh, uh, red rabbit over the top. Uh, those are pretty good too, but uh, this this was the first uh, variation I ever tied of this fly and uh, it's worked very well for me over the years, so I, I tend to stick with it. This one's particularly good in uh, late May, June, as you've got a lot of damsel nymphs, uh, damsels and dragons beginning to get active. Uh, fish just seem to eat this one up throughout uh, northwest Stillwater, so Tie yourself some olive willies this spring. Uh, you can find the materials for this fly and many others at the Confluence Fly Shop in Bellingham, Washington. Thanks for watching and please be sure to like and subscribe to our YouTube channel. See you on the water.